It was actually Britain's quest for a new fighter plane to shore up its fleet against Hitler's advances, which brought about the P-51 Mustang, America's darling aircraft of World War II. Just six months from design to test flight, the first incarnation of the aerodynamic Mustang was delivered from a U.S. company, North American Aviation, to Britain in 1942. The early Mustang lacked power at high altitudes. The solution? Installation of a powerful Merlin Rolls-Royce engine with a supercharger. You have tremendous power at sea level for takeoff, but with the supercharger, it allowed you to have that same kind of power at, uh, at a high altitude. The U.S. Army Air Forces orders 2,000 B-51s when they realize they need just such a long-range fighter to prepare for an invasion of Europe. The new engine uses about half the fuel of other fighters. The low, square-cut wing reduces drag. The wing itself was a laminar flow, gave it exceptional speed, was not very good for climbing for quick interception like the Spitfire, for example, which was designed to be an interceptor. We were designed for long-range escort, and we had uh, drop tanks that were under the wings carrying 108 gallons of gas under each wing. Then each wing internally had 92 gallons, and in the fuselage behind the pilot, we had an 85-gallon tank. That total gasoline capacity on normal crews, you could stay in the air for seven hours. The problem was with the, the fuselage tank, 85 gallons behind the center of gravity of the airplane, the airplane was very unstable. And if you tried to turn it with a full fuselage tank, the airplane would, you know, dig in. You have to reverse the stick to keep it from snapping. It was a touchy airplane. And we always, at takeoff, took off on the fuselage tank and drained it down to about 40 gallons, which brought the center of gravity back into the range where the airplane would become more stable and you could fight with it. Roland Wright didn't find out about the need to drain down the tanks until after his first mission. We didn't engage anyone on the mission, so we came back over the channel, and the weather was pretty clear. So Shemansky says, why don't you just get on back of me, and we'll do a few rolls and turns and give you a little practice on aerobatics. Well, I got back, and he did that roll, and my airplane nearly swapped ends on me. I, I couldn't, couldn't believe what was happening. So I got on the ground, and I says, hey, uh, there's something wrong with this airplane. <laughs> And he says, what do you mean? And I says, well, we did that roll, and I nearly swapped ends. He says, oh, I forgot to tell you about the fuselage tank. <laughs> so I never forgot to burn the fuel out of a fuselage tank <laughs> after that. Its aloof profile, with nose in air, causes pilots to weave their Mustangs down the runway so they can see on either side for takeoff. 